Move around. Hello, everybody. This is Paul from Off Grid Desert Farming with Paul and Adrian. Hope you guys are doing good. It looks like my screen is blurry. <laughs> I don't know what you guys can see, but uh, I got my Jesus shirt on, huh? How you like that? It is finished. That's right. It is finished. When he died on that cross and rode and rose again, it is finished. It's just up to you to uh, to acknowledge that or uh, or not. So, um, got a lot of breaking news tonight. Um, Sometimes it's uh, it's hard to keep up with everything. You know, uh, I could stay on here 24-7, folks, and bring you guys a, a breaking news update probably every 20 minutes, but I wouldn't get anything done around the house. So uh, what we got going is um, it looks like that the Polish forces, all NATO forces are being activated. Um, so I'm going to read you, read you a couple articles, but... Uh, a lot of things have gone on in the last couple of days. We've had uh, like a 24-hour news blackout. Uh, they do this every so, uh, you know, every so often. You don't hear anything for like 24 hours. Then all of a sudden you get a, a bunch of news at the same time. So what has happened in the last 24 hours is that Turkey had a meeting um, with Zelensky and he stabbed uh, Russia in the back pretty much. So Turkey um, is playing both sides of the coin here. Uh, I posted a video of the meeting between uh, Zelensky and uh, and Erdogan, and uh, he just made agreements with China a couple of weeks ago, and he's made agreements with Russia. So now he has went against Russia and is siding with Ukraine. So I don't know which side Turkey is on or Erdogan is on. It looks like uh, whoever shows up uh, at his door with some money, then he uh, you know he signs an agreement with him. Uh, so this situation is kind of crazy, folks, because uh, Turkey looks like it's going to be a wild card. Are they going to go with Russia? Or are they going to go the, with the United States and uh, NATO? Uh, so it, uh, I don't know uh, how that's going to work out because uh, Russia, uh, Vladimir Putin, uh, the other day called Erdogan up and personally talked to him and told him not to allow any NATO ships. Uh, through the Bosphorus Strait and to the Black Sea. And then uh, what did Erdogan do? He allowed two warships to pass the Bosphorus Straits, and now he's going to bar Russian ships from leaving the Black Sea coming into the Mediterranean. So this this is getting all messed up. Nobody really knows what's going on. But um, from all indications, everybody is still moving all their military pieces into place. Uh, I was watching a video today, and they, uh, for one guy, had a video of about uh, 16 of uh, what do they call that? The old Panzer uh, missiles uh, being uh, inserted into Crimea. So um, it looks like that Russia's President Putin is going to press uh, the Russian people on the 21st of April. So like my stable my connection is unstable what they're telling me i don't know if it, this thing is buffering now but uh it's a crazy situation what's going on tonight um so i'm going to tr try to bring you up to date also they've had a, a pretty bad uh coming back to the united states they had a pretty bad outbreak of tornadoes in florida uh and uh, one of our former relatives emailed us a uh, or put on her uh, facebook page uh, hailstones about the size of a golf ball hitting, uh, where was that? Winter Park, Winter Park Florida uh, today. So they've having a, quite a hailstorm there. And then a tornado's up around, I think it was Panama City, Florida. Uh, Paul Begley covered that. Uh, volcanoes going off in Caribbean islands, all kind of crazy stuff going on. Also, Israel sabotaged uh, one of Iran's nuclear power plants and shut it down. Uh, so they're calling that a, a, a terrorist attack from Israel. They said some Mossad agents, I don't know if they snuck in there or they did another cyber attack, but they shut the power off to the Nanstech uh, nuclear power plant. We'll be reading you about that. Uh, all different things are going on. So let's get started. Let me get uh, on some of these articles. Now, this is from War News. Um, it looks like New York Prepper, he uh, upended me today and uh, got the news out before I could, but like I said, you know, you can stay on this thing 24 hours a day. I can't do that. So I'm just going to probably rehash some of what he's already reported on his channel. It says movement of Polish forces. They are afraid of movements from Kaliningrad 
to Transnesia. So intense military mobility uh, of troops is recorded both in Poland and on the border with Kaliningrad and in Transnesia with transfers of Russian forces. So Russia is transferring uh, forces to the Polish border uh, to that area also. It says it seems that there are even extreme scenarios that predict a Russian advance toward Odessa and Kaliningrad. So uh, Russia controls the Kaliningrad region. Uh, if you look at the map, Russia is on one side, Belarus is in front of them, and Belarus has borders on Poland, Lithuania, uh, and that area there. And Kaliningrad is on kind of the other side of uh, Poland and Lithuania. But Russia controls that little area of Kaliningrad, and NATO and the United States want to take that away from Russia. So Russia has reinforced that little enclave of Kaliningrad, and they're, uh, you know, they're moving troops into there, but also troops, you know, uh, on the Polish border or, you know, really close to it. So what Poland is doing, they're coming in with their troops and putting them on the border with Belarus to try to block any Russian troops or Belarusian troops from going into Kaliningrad and helping them out. So everybody right now is moving their chess pieces around, trying to get them into place uh, before this war starts. Now, I was on another guy's uh, uh, live chat today, and ex evidently this guy is ex-military, but he was saying that tonight and tomorrow night, uh, 24 hours to 48 hours, uh, he thinks that Putin is going to launch uh, his attack, because what he's saying is there's there's not going to be any moon. There's not going to be any moonlight. It's going to be the darkest part of the month tonight, Saturday night and through Sunday night. So like a 24 to 48 hour period that he says Putin has a window of opportunity to go ahead and start this war in the complete darkness because Russia has a lot of night vision equipment, all their you know airplanes. They're, they're pretty much well up on the night vision. Uh, and if you uh, if you research history, United States, uh, when we attacked Iraq and all these other countries, we usually did it in the middle of the night when it was dark. So the, uh, they couldn't see anything because a lot of their troops didn't have night vision. But we do. And Russia does. And China does. So um, he is saying that Russia could go ahead and launch an, launch an attack either tonight or tomorrow night. Uh, that's not coming from me. This is coming from this other guy that I watched today. He's pretty uh, well up on things. So um, he said if Putin doesn't launch in the next 48 hours, then he's going to miss the opportunity because this, like he said, there's not going to be any moon. There's not going to be any moonlight. Everything's going to be pitch dark. And uh, he said that's the best time if you're going to launch an attack. So also with Putin addressing uh, the Russian people and his parliament in Duma, uh, that's uh, really not a good sign because they're either going to uh, – you know, the war is already going to have started or he's getting his uh, population ready for war. But uh, another telling sign is I've heard this a couple different times today is that Russia is setting up mobile hospitals all over. They're calling in reserve troops. They're calling in doctors and nurses to field uh, to be uh, 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 assigned to these mobile military hospitals because they are expecting wounded soldiers uh, to be coming in. They also set up a uh, a mobile uh, encampment, military uh, tents and everything about 200 miles outside of, of Ukraine. Uh, you can see some of the last videos that New York Prepper done, uh, uh, pictures of these mobile tents uh, with crosses on the top, you know, saying that they were, um, you know, hospital tents and not to bomb those and every, you know, they're going to have doctors and nurses in those. So I think, that, you know, this war is going to start. I cannot tell you a time. Uh, I, I don't have a crystal ball. I don't have uh, intelligence agents working for me inside the Russian government. Uh, I'm just getting my news a little bit ahead of you are, uh, you guys, and giving it to you. But uh, it could be hours or it could be days or weeks. Uh, I don't know, folks. We'll have to see. But we do know that uh, Turkey has let two of the uh, destroyers, U.S. destroyers, going through the Bosphorus Straits into the Black Sea, and they should be there in about five days. So we'll have to see what happens, uh, you know, with that. But I did post a video of, a, of another guy. He's a pretty big YouTube channel. I think he's got like 130,000 of subscribers. And he was saying that this war is on. It's just a matter of hours or days before it starts. And uh, he thinks that uh, if the United States does get involved in this war, that we're going to see some repercussions 
uh, back here in the United States. Now, I've been saying that I think they're maybe going nuclear. They have a uh, video of, of Vladimir Putin back in 2014 after uh, they took over Crimea. And he said on this video, he said that he was ready to use nuclear weapons if NATO or United States got involved to prevent them from taking uh, Crimea back. I mean, you can, I guess I need to go ahead and post that video so you can watch it. But it's a, it's a very alarming video. See, everybody thought Hillary Clinton was going to be president, not Donald Trump. So Joe Biden and the Democrats and Barack Obama and all those deep state people, they had to postpone this war for four years until Joe Biden or another Democrat got in office. So it hasn't taken Joe Biden and the Democrat and the Democratic administration very long to get this war going again that they would have already uh, had going uh, if Hillary Clinton would have been president. And Vladimir Putin also made a speech. After Trump got elected, he said if Hillary Clinton would have become president, we would have already been in World War III. We would have already been uh, in a nuclear winter with, uh, you know, uh, with the World War III. That's what he said. You can look these videos up yourself. So when Donald Trump was elected, that gave us four more years of peace. Four, I told people that. They gave us four more years to get ready, four years of peace to prepare for what was coming. And lo and behold, Joe Biden gets into the presidency. He hasn't been there six months, folks. And yet now he's going to get World War III started because they can't stand Russia. They hate Russia. They want this war so they can get on with their new world order or whatever they want to do, great reset. You know, they want to set the world uh, on uh, a blaze uh, because then they can fulfill their uh, order out of chaos. Remember that phrase, order out of chaos, the Illuminati phrase, uh, what they use all the time? You have to create chaos before you can restore order. So that's, that's what they're in the midst of doing, and Russia has no choice. You know, America... Uh, we talk a lot about in our press and in our news media about how America is for democracy and how America stands up for the little guy and how America, you know, is there to help nations uh, defend against bullies. But we're the biggest bully on the block, folks. We we uh, we invade a country and it's OK when we do it. We just make up an excuse. Remember Iraq and Saddam Hussein when. Uh, Colin Powell and everybody was telling the world that Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction. And Saddam Hussein, he kept coming on TV, says, we don't have any weapons of mass destruction. So we invaded Iraq, destroyed their country, killed over one million people, irradiated the country with our, re our radioactive munitions. And then they found out that Saddam Hussein didn't have any weapons of mass destruction after their country was obliterated. And then we went into Libya. Because Libya wanted to go off the dollar and wanted to uh, trade their oil with gold coins. And we couldn't have that. So we made up some kind of excuse. Hillary Clinton with NATO bombed the hell out of Libya, got Gaddafi killed. Uh, also, uh, Ambassador Stevens, remember that? Remember Ambassador Stevens and the U.S. Embassy in Libya where they went in there and they killed everybody and raped the ambassador? And what did Hillary Clinton say? Oh, what the hell does it have to do with anything now? They're already dead. So, you know, our country talks about standing up for the little guy, but we go into any country we want and do anything uh, when these countries were not threatening the United States. Libya was not threatening the United States. Saddam Hussein had no weapons or air force or navy that could uh, invade the United States. Syria, when we sent in ISIS and Al Qaeda, uh, Syria had no way of hurting us over here. The only country that could hurt us was Iran, and we didn't do anything about Iran because Obama and Hillary Clinton and the Democratic uh, leadership were in bed with the Iranians, with the Muslim Brotherhood. That's why we didn't do anything about Iran. So now we're talking about Russia. Russia's the aggressor. Look what Russia's doing. But yet we are on Russia's border. We have so Russia surrounded with NATO troops in Poland, Lithuania, Germany, all, I mean, you know, right on Russia's border. So how is Russia threatening the United States? Does Russia have 
millions or, or hundreds of thousands of troops in Canada? Do they have hundreds of thousands of troops in Mexico, in the Bahamas, in Cuba? No, but we have troops right on the Russian border, but Russia is the aggressor. So I'm just trying to give you some truth here. I love America and I'm a patriot and I think this is the greatest country in the world, but our government for some reason wants to destroy Russia. And we have for the last 20 or 30 years. When we're supposed to, supposedly spreading democracy and goodness and truth. But yet then you have Mike Pompeo. Remember Mike Pompeo, the defense secretary? They interviewed him on TV and he said at the CIA, they teach him how to lie, cheat and steal. And he laughed about it. I don't know how many people saw that interview with Mike Pompeo. And he said with his own mouth. Yes, we teach him how to lie, cheat, and steal. So that is what our great country is about, lying, cheating, and stealing, and breaking treaties. And uh, if you don't do what we say, then we crush you with our iron hammer. Everybody heard of the great Roman Empire, right? The Roman Empire that ruled the world for 400 years. The mighty Roman Empire, the mighty Roman legions out of Rome, the Caesars. Everybody remembers that, right? That's read a history book. Well, we are the Roman Empire, folks. United States is the revived Roman Empire. We are the muscle behind Rome, the Jesuits, the Vatican, the United States military. We have over 800 bases worldwide, folks. We have military bases in almost every country of the world. We have a $750 billion defense budget just to keep our military going a year. We are the Roman Empire, revived Roman Empire that the Bible talks about in the end days. But our time is coming to an end because of the arrogance, you know, uh, uh, of people that just think that, uh, you know, that we are an empire. So um, I just wanted to put that in there, trying to clarify a little things that, you know, no matter what happens, no matter what happens in this upcoming war. They will blame Russia 100%. The news media is going to put full blame on Russia 100%. They're not going to blame Joe Biden. They're not going to blame the policies of America and NATO. They're going to put the blame. It, it doesn't matter if Russia withdraws. They're going to put the blame on Russia. That's just how the news media is, it works. But Russia is just f defending their territory, folks. Do you know that President Zelensky of Ukraine signed a decree over three weeks ago authorizing the military of Ukraine to take back Crimea and uh, Donetsk and Lukanesk. He signed this agreement. I covered this extensively three weeks ago. This is how this all started. Joe Biden uh, is pushing this and the deep state in America is pushing this war with Russia. So the reason Russia sent all these forces to the border of Ukraine is because President Zelensky signed a decree in his government authorizing his military to attack Crimea, to attack Donetsk, to attack Lukanesk in the Donbass area. That is why Russia sent all these forces in a matter of three weeks to defend those areas. It wasn't Russian aggression. It was aggression against these Russia controlled areas. And most people don't know Crimea was part of Russia for over 400 years, folks. Look it up in your history books. Crimea was part of Russia for over 400 years. Those areas in Ukraine, Donetsk and Lukanek, are over 90% Russian speaking people. So it's not like Russia just came into Ukraine and, and, and grabbed territory. They were defending their population because they didn't want a genocide like in Serbia. They didn't want ethnic cleansing like in these other countries. So they're defending their people, their, 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 their citizens, just like America would defend uh, American citizens, you would hope. So I just wanted to give you, I just wanted to straighten those details out so you'll know the true causes of this. And ultimately, this war is about an oil and gas pipeline. See, Russia ships a lot of natural gas through Ukraine. And the George Soros 
uh, Joe Biden, Hunter Biden, they tap into that. They get money from that oil and gas coming through Ukraine. So this is about an oil and gas pipeline. What it boils down to, it boils down to money. Also, Nord Stream 2 is the pipeline that Russia is building uh, under the sea into Germany to deliver natural gas. Now, our country under Donald Trump and now under Joe Biden is trying to stop the completion of the Nord Stream 2 pipeline. Last year, they pretty much stopped it for one year, but Russia uh, had to build a new ship or modify a ship so it could finish laying this pipeline into Europe. So basically, that is another reason why this war is going to start, because they don't want Russia selling Europe natural gas. So they have to demonize Russia. They have to get Russia uh, in a bad light so they can say, well, look what Russia did. See, they, they attacked Ukraine. They killed all these people. They're, uh, they're trying to uh, take over uh, more, uh, more countries. That's what it's all about. It's ultimately about money. Who controls the resources in the world, the oil and gas and the oil and gas pipeline? That's basically all wars are about is resources, uh, conquering nations and stealing their, uh, their resources. So let me keep on going and read this article. We got a few articles to go, to go tonight. It says intense military mobility is recorded in both Poland and on the border with Kaliningrad and Transnesia with transfers of Russian forces and also Polish forces to the border. It seems that there are even extreme scenarios that predict a Russian advance toward Odessa and Kaliningrad. That is why there is a movement of Polish forces in the Swallow Corridor, a strip of land that separates Belarus from the besieged Kaliningrad area. All right, let me go on down. He says, video that saw the light of day shows a military ambulance going to pick up a wounded uh, person who had been shot by gunfire. As it becomes known, there's another dead Ukrainian also from the sleep. So um, let me go on down here. It says, also in Donetsk, there are NATO officers on the line of contact. So NATO is already in Ukraine, folks. Ukraine does not have to join NATO. I have a breaking news story, story for you. N Ukraine does not have to be accepted into NATO or become a NATO nation because the, the United States of America, Joe Biden personally, Lloyd Austin, the head of NATO, Jim Stalinberg, and European uh, prime ministers have already pledged 100% support of Ukraine when this war breaks out. So Ukraine doesn't have to be in NATO. They've already said that they're going to support Ukraine uh, if Russia attacks or if this war breaks out. So NATO is already involved. So it says Donetsk, there are NATO officers on the line of contact. Donetsk reports that NATO officers are already, are already training Ukrainian snipers. Ukrainians are being trained in a camp near Maripol. Our services have collected information stating that the training is, in, is conducted under the guidance of NATO officers. The training is based on the new American weapons that the Ukrainians received from the USA and concern the Barrett sniper rifles. So United States have, has imported a lot of the Barrett sniper rifles. Anybody uh, with any gun knowledge knows that the Barrett sniper rifle is one of our latest uh, sniper rifles that is very, very accurate. It's very good. It's one of our top of the line weapons. So they've imported these weapons to train snipers to take out Russian soldiers. Uh, says some of our forces passed by and recorded their positions near Maripol. Also, I put on about an hour ago, uh, there was another uh, cargo plane, I think a C-130, flying into uh, Ukraine, into Kiev. And uh, this guy that I watch on YouTube, he's got the flight. He's, uh, he's recording this flight. You can see it in real time uh, landing in Kiev uh, with a new shipment of weapons from the United States and NATO. So NATO will be involved in this war. All right, let me keep on going. It says Poland is moving forces to the east of the country. Poland is strengthening its forces with on the border with Belarus, according uh, to reports in the eastern part of the country in the city of Bala uh, Podaska. A new motorized battalion capable of covering 
the dangerous Belarusian direction toward the Sawaki corridor is being created. He says a new camp has been located in the old air base of Baila Podaska, with, uh, which operated from 1945 to 2002. The motorized battalion will, be, will belong to the 1st Armored Brigade, while Poland will increase the number of its troops to 200,000 soldiers. So Poland, they said they're, uh, they're going to have an army of like 200,000 soldiers. I will be leaving all these links in the description box so you guys can go back and, uh, and read them for yourself. He says that 13 kilometers from the Ukrainian border, the Russian forces are in Transnesia. Transnesia. It says, as War News 24-7 first revealed the day before yesterday, there is a movement of Russian forces in Transnesia in the direction of the uh, Ukrainian border and targeting Odessa. Ukrainians say they have been effectively surrounded by Russian forces uh, from Crimea and Donetsk on the Russian border. It is now known that Russian forces are located 13 kilometers from the Transnesian Ukrainian border. He said, thus, the Ukrainian forces are surrounded by the south and west, while from the east there are the Donetsk Lukanesk forces, and opposite the Maripol uh, are the uh, Russian amphibious forces. So Russia's pretty much got uh, uh, Ukraine surrounded right now. Also, Belarus, I reported this last week, had activated their entire military and sent them on the borders of Poland and Lithuania. So all of this stuff is happening right now, and everybody is getting their um, their military into place. So let me go on with another article here. All right, this is about the uh, address that Putin will make uh, to his people on April the 21st, if it lasts that long. So it says, Putin uh, sparks dramatic developments. A critical sermon to the Russian people. Ukrainians still plan for Donbass Russian Union. So let's uh, let's go down and read you some on this article. He said Russian President Vladimir Putin has already prepared a speech to be broadcast uh, by the Russian media, implying that it concerns Ukraine. The speech will be delivered on April 21st to the Russian Parliament, and the Russian people and the legislature will meet immediately afterwards. The last point is problematic. So I don't know if this is going to be a war declaration or the war will be already have started by then. I'm not sure, folks. I can't tell you. I'm, you know, this is breaking news to me too. He says there are three possibilities. Either Russia is bluffing and the issue is not related to the Ukraine or an alliance with Donbass will be announced or Russian military intervention or something that will trigger the development. So that is uh, that is breaking news coming in today. Um, it says speech by Vladimir Putin. What the Russian media is telling people already. He said the Fe uh, Putin intends to deliver a speech on April the twenty-first. The Federal Council has already convened as it awaits urgent orders from the president that should be implemented immediately. Mr. Putin will brief Russia. Uh, Russia's two houses of parliament, the Duma and the lower house on Wednesday, April the 21st. His speech has already been prepared. It is related to the current conflict situation that prevails worldwide. Russian media uh, has commented that Putin may launch a direct provocation against U U.S. President Joe Biden and his support for Ukraine. So uh, also coming in, this is uh, breaking news. Russian forces are deployed all around north, east, and south of Ukraine. Video recorded today shows the Russian army troops being deployed along the northern border of Ukraine. So the videos just keep on coming in. They keep on flowing in. Or more Russian armor, more tanks, everything pouring into this area that is, uh, you know, right on the Russian border. Okay, uh, we'll finish reading this article. It says the legislature's of Russia will meet uh, extraordinarily immediately after Putin's speech. So, like I said, this could be a speech getting the Russian nation and the Russian people ready for a world war. Or the war could start before this. I don't know. I'm just reading you what I have before me. Uh, it says, well-known Valenta uh, Marvinko states that uh, Putin's speech includes it says, it will give directions for the future. This is a message of a new era. 
He said, I would say that a new system is being coordinated. It focuses on the great challenges and defines the center of gravity by giving direct orders. He says, that is why we have already decided to convene the federal council immediately after Putin's speech. And the next day we will have the first uh, plenary session as the orders of our president will require immediate uh, action by lawmakers. So according to this article, they're going to have to take immediate action right after Putin uh, makes this speech. So this is very, uh, very uh, alarming news that, uh, you know, uh, he said uh, Putin's speech will be a milestone. So evidently this is going to be a major speech by President Putin addressing the Russian people and not only the world. So it does look like this thing is not going away. It doesn't look like that nobody's going to be backing down. And I don't know, like I said, if NATO or United States might try to attack Russia even before this speech. Uh, this is going to be in 10 days. So a lot can happen in 10 days, people. There's a lot of news that can happen uh, in 10 days. Let me go ahead and turn this light on, get a little bit more light for you guys. He said, uh, U.S. threatens Russia. You will pay for your aggression. Now, this has just come out. I, I, I just uploaded today a video of Anthony Blinken uh, threatening Russia that they're going to pay for their actions. Go back a few videos that I did today and watch that. He said the U.S. Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken, stated, we warn Russia about Ukraine. President Biden has sent a very clear warning on this issue. If Russia acts recklessly or engages in aggressive activities against Ukraine, this will have consequences. He says, as we speak at this time, I must tell you that I have real concerns about Russia's actions on the border with Ukraine. There are more Russian forces gathering on these borders at any time since 2014, where when Russia first invaded. That is why we are in close contact in coordination with our allies in Europe. Did you just hear what I said? The Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken, said we are in close contact with our allies in Europe. So that means NATO allies. No one knows when this war is going to break out. United States might go ahead and launch a preemptive attack against Russia. I don't know, folks. We're all going to find out together. We're all living in history right now. You are experiencing history, folks. Something like this has never happened in over 80 years. So you are experiencing history that you'll be able to tell your grandkids uh, if, you, if we all live that long. Also, uh, go to Marfugel News. Marfugel News, uh, I think yesterday, put out a short video, a three-minute video. He said from his contacts, from Marfugel News contacts that American uh, reserve soldiers and soldiers are being called up. They're being called back on vacation. They're being called in all over the United States. I cannot confirm that. Go to Marfugel News. Watch one of his last videos. It's about a three-minute video, and he'll tell you in his own words that he has information coming in to his channel that United States military all across the United States is being recalled to come into the base. Like I said, I cannot confirm that. And I also have news that Russian forces are calling up reserves. We know that Ukraine put out a, a countrywide uh, a call up of over 100,000 soldiers last week. I reported on that. So Ukraine has called in their reserve troops. And I would assume now that uh, all of NATO is calling up their reserve. I, the last video I did yesterday, I read an article telling you that Britain now, Britain, France, and Europe is on high alert. NATO is on high alert for an imminent potential conflict. They said imminent potential conflict with Russia and Ukraine. So all the militaries in Europe right now pretty much are on high alert. That means that they think this war is imminent. I don't know when it's going to start. Like I said, we'll probably all find out together uh, when this war starts. But Russia's not messing around. Russia is not a third world country. People fail to realize that Russia is not a third world country. They have more nuclear missiles and more 
nuclear weapons than we do, folks. They have submarines off of both of our coasts and probably even in the Gulf of Mexico. You know that Russia just launched their doomsday uh, submarine a few days ago with the Poseidon torpedo. It's a doomsday torpedo that blows up in the ocean, creates a 500 to 700 foot tsunami that will swamp our coastlines with radioactive water. They call it their doomsday weapon. They just launched the first submarine. It has six torpedoes on it. It's called the Belgrad, tor uh, Belgrad uh, submarine and it carries six Poseidon uh, torpedoes. And each of these torpedoes can carry a, I think it's a hundred megaton warhead. And what this torpedo does, it, it is nuclear, it's a nuclear powered torpedo and, and it could go up to 100 miles an hour under the water, up to a thousand miles on its own. So this sub, it doesn't even have to get close to the United States. This torpedo alone going 100 miles an hour under the water uh, up to 1,000 miles can reach our shore. Plus their regular submarines. They have submarines in the Arctic. Russia showed off to the world over a month ago when they uh, went up through the ice with three nuclear submarines, folks. They did this so the world can see that they had the potential of putting America's lights out. They surfaced three of their nuclear submarines within 300 feet of each other at one time. And I posted that video for you guys to see. So Russia is not a third world country, yet we treat them like a dog. America looks down at Russia. America talks down at Putin and the Russian people like they're, like they're nobody, like they're trash. And I think Russia's had enough of it. Putin's had enough. And then Joe Biden came out a few weeks ago and called Putin a killer and insulted him and the Russian people on live TV, folks. That's when all this started, when Joe Biden opened his big mouth and called Putin a killer. So I guess Putin is going to show Joe Biden how much of a killer he can be. So you can blame this war on Joe Biden and the Democrats, not the Russian people. Because oh, Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton, Joe Biden, Hunter Biden, they all got to beef up their ass for uh, for Putin and the Russian people. I don't know why. They want to start this war. So that's just my opinion. You can agree with me or you can disagree, but uh, that's what's going on. So let me keep on reading on this article. So... Uh, United States, Joe Biden and our State Department has asked the Russian people, what are your intentions? They called up the Russian military and they asked them, what are your intentions with these troop movements? And Russia told them, it's none of your business. We have a right to move troops along our border anytime we want. That's basically the answer that Russia has given the United States Pentagon. It's none of your business. This is our country. We can move troops anytime we want, where we want. It's none of your business. Stay out of our business. Uh, Survey Lavrov has also said that pretty much the diplomatic relations between Russia and the United States now are dead. Russia withdrew their ambassador to Washington, D.C. over a month ago, and he's not coming back. They're not sending their ambassador back to America, folks. That's going to tell you something right there that this is not just a little skirmish. We are on the verge of something historic happening in the world. And uh, you guys need to be prepared for that. I don't know if it's going to come to the American shoreline. I don't know. It may and may not. Hopefully it won't. But I can't guarantee anything. So let me keep on going with the articles. Um, now, this is on Turkey in the Bosphorus Strait. Let me... Uh, let me read you what happened here. Uh, Turkey fire response blockade only Russian ships. U.S. can break the Montrex Treaty for humanitarian reasons. Now, this is what I was talking about a little bit earlier. Now, President Putin called up Erdogan personally and talked to him. And that same day, there was four contacts with the Turkish government trying to let them know that Russia does not want American warships in the Black Sea. So what does Erdogan do? 
He allows two warships to pass the Bosphorus Straits right now into the Black Sea, and he has barred Russian ships from coming out of the Black Sea into the Mediterranean. So he's going against Russia. Uh, and then he signed this agreement with uh, the president of Ukraine, Zelensky, yesterday, stabbing Russia in the back again. So if this war breaks out, I mean, uh, Turkey might be a target of Russian missiles, too. So I, you know, I don't know which side Turkey is on. Turkey, like I said, they're playing both sides of the equation. Whoever shows up with a lot of money in their hand, uh, Turkey's all over them. You know, that's not a good friend to have. You know, one minute they're they're patting you on the back, and the next minute they got a knife in your back. That's how Turkey operates. They're not a loyal friend. So let's keep on going with the articles. Says the Ukrainians launch uh, zero TR-21 Tocha missiles in Donbass. Moscow's first target is the Kirshen Water Dam RQ 4A Global Hawk over Crimea. So this was a couple days ago. The United States sent one of our U.S. RQ 4A Global Hawk spy planes uh, to fly over the Crimea area and gather intelligence. So that's been happening the last couple days that we are now gathering target information of Russian forces where they can bomb once this war starts. So, um, you know, and also the uh, Ukrainians are moving in their missile complexes uh, also. So everybody's getting ready. Uh, that's basically what's been going on the last couple of weeks. I'm just clicking, uh, clicking uh, through these articles. I think I read this to you before. Um, let me go up to the top. Russia sets up Army Field Hospital near Ukraine, moves Iskander missiles and amphibious landing craft from the Caspian Sea to the Ukrainian coast. So I was talking about this before, how Russia has set up these field hospitals because they are expecting wounded soldiers and, uh, and people to die once this war starts. Uh, so let's keep on going with the articles. I got a bunch of articles, so I'm just trying to skim through here. Now, this is from the, uh, I think this is from the Daily Star. Let me see. No, this is from the Sun. So every, uh, every news outlet has got a different number of Russian troops on the border. Now, this article, it says, act of war, uh, Putin's army to be deployed at Ukraine's border with 80, 85,000 troops ready for conflict as war tensions mount. So this is from the Sun newspaper. Russia. Russia is breaking news right now. They're going to be, be, be deploying a robot army, uh, robot tanks. This is the first time in history that Russia will use robot tanks in a war. So this is pretty dramatic. It says Vladimir Putin's robot army will be deployed at Ukraine's border along with 85,000 troops ready for conflict as war tensions mount. The new unmanned firepower was inspected by Defense Minister Sergei Soji last week at the 7th 766 Production and Technological Enterprise in Narhabio near Moscow. He said the Urin 9 unmanned combat ground vehicle has a tank and machine guns. He said the first unit with the strike robots will be set up in the Russian Armed Forces to operate five urine nine robotic systems or 20 combat vehicles announced the defense ministry troops would be undergoing training to operate the urine nine robotic vehicles with special military units it was announced a video shows the unmanned tank in action it is armed with a 30 millimeter automatic machine gun uh atika anti-tank missiles and and a flamethrower. The latest news of the new technology comes as Putin's troops boast they are primed for battle. So let me go on down and finish this article. Like I said, I will be leaving all these articles in the description box so you guys can go back and watch or read them. He said a video leaked earlier today captured ready for conflict appeared to show armored vehicles moving through the mud and in position near the flashpoint border in Ukraine. The chilling clip thought to have been filmed by Russian soldiers also shows a train convoy of military trucks moving 
within striking distance of Ukraine. Uh, Kiev uh, estimates that there are now some 85,000 Russian troops between 6 and 25 miles from its frontier in Crimea. The Russian uh, army currently possesses mine clearing robots called Urine 6, uh, firefighting Urine 14s, as well as assault uh, robots, the Urine 9. Underwater and spy robots are also in the development. He said, Defense Minister Sergei Shoji ordered the robot designers to improve the technical capability of his unmanned army to overcome the impact of strong electromagnetic radiation as well as radi uh, radioactive pollution. So they designed these robot tanks to withstand a nuclear blast so they can operate in a radiation area. Uh, so this is happening, folks. This is not science fiction. This is happening right now. He said, we expect to continue expanding the range of our robots, which, of course, are already in demand in the military today. So this is uh, this is uh, breaking news happening. They're going to use robots the first time in a major war. Uh, let's keep on going. Now, I read you this the other day, but we'll, uh, we'll just read the headlines. Aerodon or Erdogan and Zelensky confirmed strategic partnership between Turkey and Ukraine after the Istanbul meeting yesterday. So like I said, Turkey has stabbed Russia in the back. They went ahead and signed all these documents uh, with Ukraine uh, pretty much going against Russia. So Russia is not very happy uh, at, this, uh, at this point. Uh, let me keep on going. Uh, this is from TASK Russian News Agency. TASK Russian News Agency. Erdogan tells G Zelensky, Turkey will not recognize Crimea's annexation. They're not going to recognize uh, Crimea as Russian territory, again, going against the Russian Federation. He said Turkish President Recep uh, Erdogan said on Saturday, he told his visiting Ukrainian counterpart, Vladimir Zelensky, that Ankara will not recognize the Crimea annexation by Russia. We stand for Ukraine's territorial integrity and sovereignty. We reiterated our principal decision not to recognize Crimea's annexation by Russia. We said we support Ukraine's initiative uh, of the Crimean platform geared to consolidate the international community around Crimea. We hope this initiative will yield positive results for all the Crimean peoples, including the Crimean Tartars for Ukraine. He told a news conference after talks with Zelensky that was televised by uh, Turkish TV. So like I said, again, it looks like Turkey is going on the side of Ukraine and NATO in the United States, stabbing Russia in the back right after they signed another treaty with Russia. So this is, this is pretty much uh, crazy news going on. Let me keep on going. Uh, this is also uh, breaking news, expanded meeting of the Defense Ministry Board. Vladimir Putin visited the National Defense Control Center where he took part in an annual expanded meeting of the Defense Ministry Board. I will be leaving this uh, article in the description box. So uh, they're having all kinds of strategic meetings in Russia right now. Also, the Europeans are having meetings about what's going on. Um, I'm just trying to get these, uh, these videos to upload here. Now, this is what I was talking about before. I'm watching, the, or I have the video up that, um, hold on just a second. Now, according to the CNN report, uh, Russia was ready to put its nuclear forces on alert over the uh, crisis in Crimea last year. Such was the threat to the Russian people. President Vladimir Putin said in a documentary that aired on state TV on, on Sunday night, asked if Russia was prepared to bring its nuclear weapons into play. Putin said, we were ready to do it. I talked with the colleagues and told them that this Crimea is our historic territory. 
Russian people live there. They are in danger. We cannot leave them. It wasn't us who committed the coup. It was the nationalists and the people with extreme beliefs. So Putin admitted on TV, uh, I have the video right here, that they were ready to use nuclear weapons against, I guess, Ukraine or the United States back in 2014. So if they were ready back then, I know they're ready today to do the same thing. So let me keep on going. I got just a few more articles and we're going to end this tonight. But I did want to bring you up to date on uh, on the breaking news. Like I said, that's pretty much been a blackout. Um, you know what's been going on. Now, the next article is from Jane Defense Weekly. Any, anybody that knows anything about the military, there's an organization called Jane's Defense. Uh, let, me, let me go down here. Uh, Russian ground troop units with Iskander ballistic missiles identified at Ukrainian border by Jane's. So Jane's is a defense uh, uh, publication that keeps track of all military movements around the world. It says open source intelligence specialist, specialist at James, Tomic Bullock identifies 14 ground troop units and Iskander short-range ballistic missile systems at the Ukrainian border. So the Iskander missile is uh, one of Russia's top uh, missiles that can carry conventional weapons and also uh, nuclear uh, warheads on this missile. He said James has identified at least 14 Russian ground troop units that have moved and are moving to the Ukrainian area of operations since late March through open source intelligence. Jane's has identified an influx of central military district troops from the 74th and the 35th motorized brigades, the 120th artillery brigade, and the 6th tank regiment equipped with tanks, infantry fighting vehicles, and long-range artillery, including two S-19 MSTA-S, 152 millimeter self propelled guns, TOS-1A thermobaric multiple rocket launchers, MRLS, and BM-27 Uragan 20, 222 millimeter MRLS uh, entering uh, the Volzak area by train. He said James Defense Weekly also has identified the deployment of Iskander short-range ballistic missile systems likely belonging to the 119th Missile Brigade to the Voronezh region uh, from the central region in Russia. So all these systems right now are being moved or have been moved right outside of Ukraine for this war. That's what I'm saying. Russia is not bluffing. Vladimir Putin is not bluffing. And I do think this war could break out at any minute. I don't have an exact date, folks. Um. I got just one or two more articles for you guys. Uh, I think I got one more here. I'm trying to. Um, all right. This is from uh, the uh, Russian news agency TASS, the Russian news agency TASS. It says Russia reinforces the border and U.S. anti-Nord Stream 2 uh, crusade uh, proven futile. He said the Biden White House is going to impose new sanctions against Russia. According to U.S. media reports, they will affect the people close to President Vladimir Putin. Washington is also setting its sights on expelling a group of Russian diplomats and taking a swipe at the Nord Stream 2 gas pipeline by appointing a special envoy to coordinate work on sabotaging the pipeline. Moscow is making it clear that the answer will be tough. According to the American press reports, various options are being looked at. Sanctions may be imposed against state agencies responsible for Moscow's alleged interference in the election and people close to the Russian head of state. In addition, intelligence officers working under diplomatic cover might be booted from the US. So um, that's what's going on in the world, folks. It doesn't look good. But uh, we'll just have to keep our eyes peeled. And uh, like I said, if there's any more breaking news, uh, we'll be sure to, uh, to, uh, to get on and alert you guys. So we got 505 people watching. 
Uh, if you guys wouldn't mind giving us a thumbs up, that helps our analytics. But I do want to thank you guys for showing up. We have Drops Family Garden, Lori, uh, Ann Wadsworth is here, Francisco. Uh, we got a lot of new people uh, uh, looking at our channel right now. So if you haven't subscribed, folks, push that subscribe button and hit the notification bell. That will alert you to uh, all of our upcoming videos uh, that we're going to be covering this uh, breaking news story. So like I said, according to one military analyst, they think that tonight or tomorrow night is the best time for Putin to launch this attack. I don't know what's going to happen, but I do believe that we are on the verge of a major, major war in the world. So all this is leading up to what the Bible says, that we would have wars and rumors of wars in the last days. And a lot of people, you know, they're, they're worried. Uh, a lot of things have been happening since last year, since 2020. We had this virus break out in China, in Wuhan, China, that has pretty much turned the world upside down on its own. Everybody having to wear face masks, uh, all the social distancing, all the lockdowns pretty much stressed everybody out last year. Millions of people last year lost their jobs because of this, uh, this pandemic that broke out in China. And then we have to add on now a possibility of a war, a world war starting in Ukraine and probably spreading into the Middle East. Uh, and then you have the China option. What is China going to do? Is China going to take over Taiwan uh, while the United States is busy in Ukraine? Is Iran going to attack Israel? Nobody really knows, folks. But time is growing short. As I've said on all my videos, Jesus Christ is coming back. And I wanted to read some scripture to you tonight before we go. We have a lot of different people that watch our channel and, uh, and watch our videos. And some of them are Muslim and some people, they don't believe that Jesus Christ is truly the son of God. Many people in the world believe that Jesus was just a prophet. They don't believe that Jesus was actually the son of God. The, the Quran, the holy book that most Muslims read, they admit that Jesus was a holy man of God. He was a holy prophet. And according to the Quran, a prophet of God cannot lie. A holy man of God, a holy man like Mohammed or holy man that they consider Jesus as, a prophet of God cannot lie. So is Jesus Christ a liar or is he telling the truth? Jesus cannot be a prophet of God if he's lying. A prophet of God, according to the Quran, must tell the truth. He must be a holy man. He cannot lie. So is Jesus a liar or is he telling the truth? If he's telling the truth, then he is the son of God. The Bible says that an angel came to Mary. They call her Mother Mary in the Catholic Church, but Mary. And the angel told her that the Holy Spirit would hover over her and she would give birth to this child and his name would be called Jesus. That God Almighty would impregnate Mary and she was a virgin. She had never known a man before. So that baby would be half God, half man. God put his DNA into that child so that child could die for the sins of the world, folks. That child was part of God. And throughout the New Testament, people that deny that Jesus was the Son of God, they never have read the New Testament. Throughout the whole New Testament, there are verses and verses and more verses stating that Jesus was the Son of God and still is the Son of God. But many religions like the Muslim religion do not believe that Jesus was the Son of God. So they're basically calling Jesus a liar. But how can Jesus be a liar if he's a holy man, if he's a prophet? Because a prophet of God, they admit that he's a prophet of God, a prophet of God, according to them, cannot lie. So I'm going to read you a few scriptures from the Bible. And this is what Jesus said about himself. 
So I want all the Muslims that are watching this, I want you to listen closely. I know your imams and your clerics have told you that Jesus is not the son of God, but I'm going to read you from the prophet himself, the prophet Jesus Christ, that your holy book states that he was the son of God. Out of Jesus' own mouth, he's going to tell you what exactly he is. This is from the book of John. There are four books. The first four books of the New Testament is called the Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. These are the four books when Jesus walked the earth and they recorded his conversations and what he said. This is out of the mouth of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. This is chapter 5 in the book of John. It says, therefore the Jews saw... Uh, Okay, let's, let's, we're, we're going to start off chapter 5, verse 15. It says, And therefore did the Jews persecute Jesus and sought to kill him, because he had done these things on the Sabbath day. Now, if you go back, Jesus had just healed a man on the Sabbath day, and all the Pharisees and all the Sadducees and all the religious leaders in the temple, they were going crazy because Jesus healed a man on the Sabbath day. They wanted to kill him for that. Not only did he do it on a Sabbath day in the next verse, but Jesus answered them and he said, my father, my father, he called God his father, my father hereunto, and I work. He said, therefore the Jews sought to kill him more because he not only had broken the Sabbath and healed a man, but also said God was his father, making himself equal with God. Now listen to what Jesus said. Jesus, out of his own mouth, is going to tell you over and over and over again that he truly is the son of God. He's the son of man and he's the son of God, the only one able to die for the sins of the world. And then Jesus said and answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do. There again he calls God his Father. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. For the Father loveth the Son. Did you hear what he said? The Father, which is in heaven, God, loveth the Son. He's calling himself the Son of God. And showeth him all things that himself doeth. And he will show him greater works than these that ye may marvel. For as the Father raised up the dead and quickeneth them, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. So then again he says, he calls the guy upstairs, God, his father. He said, for the father judges no man, but he hath committed all judgment unto the son. He's calling himself the son of God. That all men should honor the son, even as they have honored the father. Jesus is calling himself the son of God, and he's calling God his father over and over and over again. So you guys, you, you can say that Jesus is not the son of God, but Jesus in this verse has told you who he is. Let me keep on going. This verse is quite long. Verily, verily, I say unto you that he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but it is passed from death into life. Verily, verily, I say unto you that the hour is coming and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God. And they shall, and they that hear shall live. There again, he calls himself the Son of God. For as the Father, the Father God, has life in himself, so has he given that to the Son who has life in himself. There again, Jesus said that he's the Son of God. And he hath given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the son of man. So Jesus calls himself also the son of man. Marvel not at this for the hours coming in which all that are in their graves shall hear his voice 
and they shall come forth, they that have done good, and unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil, unto the resurrection of damnation. I can of my own self do nothing as I hear. I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me. So there again, he's calling God his Father that sent him. If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. There is another that bear witness of me, and I know that the witness which he witnesses of me is true. Ye sent unto John, and he bear witness unto the truth. But I receive not testimony from man, but these things I say that you might be saved. He was a burning and a shining light, and ye were willing for a season to rejoice in his light. But I have a greater witness than that of John for the works which the father there again, he calls himself God, his father. But the works which the father have given me to finish the same works that I do bear witness of me that the father has sent me. You see, Jesus is saying over and over again that he is the son of God. He is the son of the living God. And the Father himself, which has sent me, hath borne witness of me. Ye have heard his voice at any time, nor has seen his shape, and ye have not, and ye have not his word abiding in you. For whom he has sent, him ye believe not. He said, Search the scriptures, for in them ye think you have eternal life, and they which testify of me. He says, I am come in my father's name. This is verse number 43. And if ye receive me not, if another shall come in his own name, you will receive. How can you believe which receive honor from one another? And you seek not the honor that cometh from God only. Do not think that I will accuse you to the father. There is one that accuses you, even Moses, in whom you trust. So in this verse in the book of John, Jesus tells you who he is. He tells you he's the son of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall have eternal life. Jesus Christ is coming back, folks. He's coming back to the earth. God sent his son to die on that cross for your sins. Jesus is the only son of God, the firstborn of God. And he came to earth to die so you wouldn't have to go to hell. Things are accelerating on the earth. Time is growing short for you to make a decision. But God gave you a choice to make. Are you going to trust his son or are you going to trust the world system? Who will you serve on this earth? Will you serve Jesus Christ or will you serve Satan and the world system? That's what he wants to know. But time is running out. No one has promised it tomorrow. Tomorrow may end for some of you watching this, folks. There might not be a tomorrow. No one knows the day that they're going to leave this earth. So I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to ask you probably the most important question anyone has ever asked you. Are you ready to meet God? Are you ready to stand before Jesus Christ? Are you ready? To pay for your sins or will you let Jesus Christ pay for your sins? If you do not know for 100% that you're going to go to heaven when you die. And you want to make sure tonight. I'm going to invite you to ask Jesus into your life tonight. Don't put God off another day, folks. You might not have another tomorrow. Tomorrow may never come. So if you cannot say that. You would be in heaven if you died tonight of a stroke, of a heart attack. If you got killed in a tornado. If you got shot in a grocery store going to buy in a gallon of milk, just like those 10 people in Colorado a few weeks ago got killed in a grocery store by a mad gunman. That you would go to heaven and you want to make sure tonight, just repeat this prayer after me. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the father but by me. You can't work your way to heaven. Your church cannot save you. Your denomination can't get you into heaven, folks. 
you have to admit that you're a sinner. Without repentance, there is no salvation. You have to be sorry and you have to turn away from sin and you have to want to serve God the rest of your life. So if you want to make sure, if you want to get born again tonight, just repeat this prayer and mean it. Be honest with God and he'll be honest with you. Just say, dear Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. And I ask you right now, Lord, to forgive me for all of my sins and wash them away with your precious blood. I believe that you are the son of God. And I believe that you died on that cross and that you shed your blood for me and that you rose again the third day. I want to thank you right now, Jesus, for saving my soul, for giving me eternal life. Amen. Now, if you said that prayer and you really meant it, some of you feeling strange, you feel like a weight has been taken off. Some of you are crying uncontrollably. Everybody has a different reaction. But when you invited Jesus into your heart, the Holy Spirit came now and he dwells in your heart. And he's going to lead you and guide you. But you've got to turn away from sin. You cannot keep sinning willfully. If you're living in sin with somebody that is not your husband or wife, you either need to move out of that house or apartment or you need to get married. You need to go up to the courthouse, make an appointment and get married, folks. Living in sin is going to send you to hell. God will not allow sin into heaven, folks. You got to take some action now. If you watch pornography all the time, you need to turn that computer off. You need to quit that stuff. If you're stealing from your job, if you're cheating on your wife or husband, you got to stop that, folks. That's sin. God is not going to let sin into heaven. See, a person can claim that they're a Christian, but your actions have to follow your words. Just because uh, I claim to be a duck doesn't mean I'm a duck, folks. A person can claim all day that they're a Christian, but if their life does not reflect that, if you're mean to people, if you're always telling lies, if you're chewing on people, if you're going behind their back and gossiping, that's not the fruit of the Spirit. Just because you claim to be something, you have to line up with the Word of God. The Bible says you're going to know a Christian by their fruit. An orange tree cannot produce grapes. And a grapevine cannot produce apples. You're going to produce whatever is in your heart. If you're evil, you're going to produce evil things in your life. If you're a good person and you're uh, lined up with God, you're going to do good things in your life. That's the way it works, folks. So just because we proclaim that we're holier than thou, that we have our halo screwed on so tight, and we're the meanest SOB on the block, you think God's proud of that? You know, a lot of Christians go around and they think they're, they, they, they really do, they think they're, they're better than other people. Like their halo is screwed on so tight and they're judging people. Let God judge people, folks. That's not our job to judge people. It's our job to love people, to show the love of God, not to tell everybody what's wrong with them. Give them the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let God heal their body. Let God heal their spirit and their soul, folks. We're supposed to love people like God loved us. We can't go in around judging the world. Let God do that. He's the judge. The Bible says that they will know us by our love, not our hate. If you hate your brother for any reason, there is no love of God in you. If you hate a person because he's a different color, there is no love of God in you. If you hate a person because of their race, there is no love of God in you. God loves everybody, folks. God doesn't see our skin color. He doesn't see our race, but he sees your heart. That's what God's looking for. He's looking inside your heart. And a lot of you guys need to hear that. Tell people about Jesus. Show them the love of God. Give them the gospel of Jesus Christ and let God do the work. It's not our job to change a person, folks. That's God's job. Love on them and God will change them. Be nice to them. But tell them the truth in love. 
Don't tell them the truth, yelling and screaming and hating on them. Tell them the truth the way Jesus told the truth. You know, the only people that Jesus had a problem with was religious people. Jesus had no problem with the normal population, folks. He, he ate and sat down with uh, publicans and sinners and prostitutes. He had no problem dealing with the average person. The only problem Jesus had in the Bible was with the religious, religious demons, religious people, the Sad Sadducees, the Pharisees, the lawyers, the scribes, the ones that wanted to kill him, the ones that did kill him, the religious in the church, just the same as we have today. There's a lot of people that criticize me because I have long hair and a beard and they think I look like a hippie. God judges us on the inside, not on the outside. We need to show the love of God. That's the only way that you're going to get people to listen to what you have. Because if you come at them with a stick, if you come at them with a Bible in your hand and beating them over the head, they're never going to listen to you because all they see is hate. All they see is a judgmental person. They don't see the love of God in you. Nobody's going to listen to that kind of person, but they will listen to somebody that is kind, that has an answer without hate, without uh, judging them, folks. Nobody's perfect on the earth. I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. There's a lot of hurting people in the world, and they're looking for answers right now, and you might have the answer. But they're not going to listen to you if, you if you're mean to them. Even though they're living in sin, even though they're doing things wrong, show the love of God first. You're going to attract a lot more flies with honey than with a fly swatter. You're going to attract a lot more people with a carrot than a stick. God is the answer. Jesus Christ is the answer. But we must present ourselves like God presented himself when he sent Jesus to the earth. Jesus went and he mixed with all the people, folks. He healed the sick. He raised the dead. And he gave people the gospel. And they were hungry for that because he did it in a loving and compassionate way. And that, that is how, how God called us to do all sin will be judged, folks. All sin. Whether you're a liar, whether you're a backstabber, whether you're a, a, a gossip. You know, the worst one of the worst sins in the church is that nobody talks about. But everybody can tell if you're involved in this sin. You know what it is? It's called gluttony. You know, that's a sin, folks, when you overeat. When you're so big, you can't even sit in a chair. That's called gluttony, folks, that you cannot hide from the world. You're living in sin if you're a glutton. If you cannot push away from that table, if you're more than 100 pounds overweight, you're a glutton, folks. But nobody wants to talk about that. They want to talk about homosexuality. They want to talk about pornography. They want to talk about adultery. But nobody wants to address gluttony. You know, gluttony is just the biggest sin as all the others. To God, all sin is equal. Glutton, you can tell a glutton, just look at them, folks, they're 400 pounds. I'm not judging anybody. I'm just telling you what church people, they want to point fingers, but yet they don't want to look in the mirror themselves. I'm stepping on a lot of toes right now, and a lot of people might unsubscribe, but you need to hear this. Don't judge other people when you need to correct your own life. Our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. How are you treating this temple that God gave you? God gave you a body. He expects you to take care of that body. And when you abuse your body with food, you're just as guilty as somebody that's robbing a 7-Eleven down the store. You're committing a sin against your own, your own temple, your own body that God, given, that God gave you. You're neglecting your body. You're abusing your body with food. Same thing with a drunk, a drunkard that drinks. They're abusing their temple, folks. Anyway, I just wanted to, you know, God leads us in, in directions. I don't plan anything when I do these live chats. I just go with the flow. Whatever God puts in my head, I go with. So some of you guys needed to hear that tonight.
So I want to thank you guys for showing up. You've been great. Um, like I said, we have almost had a little bit over 500 tonight. We lost about 200. A lot of people come on just for the news, and I understand that. They don't want to hear any preaching. But this is the most important part of the broadcast right here, folks. This is going to determine where you end up, either heaven or hell. That's the most important. So anyway, God bless you guys. If anything, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not judging you. If you smoke, you know, you're not going to go to hell for smoking, but it's hurting your temple. You know, God doesn't like it, but God's not going to send you to hell for, for smoking a cigarette or drinking a glass of wine now and then. But just seek God, folks. God will correct all that. I'm not here to correct that. That's between you and God alone. You know, that's between you and God. You'll have to work that out for yourself. But anyway, thank you guys for showing up. You've been great. Um, if any, uh, if we do have any more breaking news, we'll be try to uh, to get on and deliver it to you. So God bless. I'm going to go ahead and get all these articles loaded so uh, you can uh, you can go back and uh, research some of this information. Bye bye.